Good morning, everybody. So I appreciate the opportunity to come in and say a few words this morning, very few words, 10 minutes worth. So we've got the, uh, the timer, I assume, that's already started. Uh, so what I was going to do is tell you a bit of a story today, and that story is a long road, and it has had a lot of turns to it. But before we start down that path, I wanted to find out how many of you have ever heard of the company Plygem before, before today. All right, so we've got a couple of head nods and a hand up. So Plygem is a building products company, just very quickly. We have about 8,000 employees uh, headquartered in Cary with about 30 manufacturing plants, and overall is about a $2 billion company, so a fairly nice middle-sized company. And this company's focus is on building products, so it's exterior products, so everything on the outside of your house today, other than probably the garage doors. So we sell through companies like Lowe's, Home Depot, we sell to lumber yards, et cetera. So we're normally the ones that are covered up in brands, so you normally don't see Plygem, but that's the company behind the product. So with this company, the focus on the company is very much in quality, it's very much in production, it's very much in meeting customer needs. So when opportunities come up that are very different than what we do today, it's very hard, it was very hard for the company to start considering those. So what Plygem did a couple of years ago is we created a new entity called Foundation Labs. And the purpose of this new entity is to take a look at new opportunities. So as we look at those opportunities, it's a way to further explore those without impacting the rest of the company. So a few years ago, we had an opportunity. So we had a company that came up to us, and they're like, we are interested in recycling plastics. And we've developed a technology that, you know, if you look at the water bottle today, this is one of the most heavily recycled products we have out there. But the cap on it and the label are put in landfills. That's the one part of this product that's not recycled. And if you think about the other caps, so everything with a cap today, very, very low recycling rates around that product. So we're like, okay, let's take a look at this. Let's figure out what we can do with it. So we spent a few years around this, and it was a lot of issues with this product. We ran into challenges. We tried to look at certain products. We wanted to look at products in different ways. We want, and we found we had roadblocks each time. So we finally found a couple of products that worked with this material. We combined the plastics, we combined natural fibers. We looked at everything from hemp to rice hulls to cottons to coconut husk. We looked at a lot of different fibers and we looked at minerals. We looked at things like talc, things such as calcium carbonate, other carbon black, other type of chemicals that we could actually put together so there's a lot of formulation challenges that we faced, and we finally got to the point where we had a stable material science. So we had a predictable material science that we knew it could reach certain limits, that we knew we could test it in certain ways, and we baselined it. Then we had to figure out how to process it. So the formulation is just one half. The second half of this is the processing. And the processing, do you compress it? Do you extrude it? Do you injection mold it? lots of different ways to do high volume processing. So once we figured out the formulation, we had to continue to tweak it until we actually were able to process it. And as we're looking at this material, we first thought this would be a neat siding product. But then it's like, well, not really, because it didn't hit some of the characteristics. So we then said, let's take a look at a smaller piece of it. And we looked at it, and it's like, this would be a wonderful roof shake. This looks great. We could actually put it on the roof. So what we did, a team of scientists, we went to rock quarries. Specifically, we went to slate quarries. And we went to slate boneyards because it was important for us to find the right piece of slate to transform or to take that look and put it onto the slate shingle. So we, after about a month, 30 days of visiting rock quarries, we came out with 12 individual pieces of slate that were like, this is what we want our product to look like. So we spent quite a bit of time digitizing these pieces of slate, we took that digi digitalization and we transferred that into a mold cutter and we cut molds so it looks like the slate. So now we have a product. So this product resists fire, it resists hail, it can withstand hurricane strength winds, and it looks great. So it looks like slate, like real slate. And so we then said this is a knockout product. In parallel, what we did is we had to look at the market. Because the technology by itself is really is nice and it will sit on a shelf unless you have a counter 
business model with it. So you actually have to have a way to commercialize the product. If you're only looking at it from a technology focus, you will miss the game. You have to look at it as well from the market perspective. So in looking at it from the market perspective, and this was, we had some really um, interesting groups here because we do a lot of work trying to build an ecosystem outside our company because we have s some competencies, but what we need are usually out in the field. So with this project, what we did is we actually had for each semester of NC State's Masters of Global Innovation Management Studies, long term for MGEM, we had a semester team every semester from MGEM work with us on the business case to help us look at different aspects, look at it really from fresh eyes. You know, somebody who knows nothing about the industry, nothing about the market, how would you tackle this? This year, we combined it with a Keenan Fellow uh, and her class. So we sponsored a Keenan Fellow last summer in Fair Bluff, North Carolina, which is where our R&D and manufacturing is. And Ms. Patillo out of Columbus County, we engaged her 10th grade students this semester along with the NC State students. So they combined are trying to help us solve some problems from a marketing perspective. So it's interesting because one of those challenges was help us find a name. So the master's level students came up with some names, the 10th graders came up with some names, and guess what? We're going to use one of the 10th grader names. All right. So it's been a great collaboration and use of the students of Ms. Patillo her or summer that she spent with us, she actually created a business curriculum around new product introduction, around how do you find these new innovative type products. So they're going to help us name the next product that we make. So the marketing aspect is also has a lot of pitfalls, just like the technology side. So what we started to employ here is a lot of analytics, big data. We started looking at how do we actually get down to low level to the houses themselves to understand what houses have slate roofs? What houses want slate roofs? Well, that's something that's not in housing permits. So we've used everything from Google Earth to look at their visualization technology and to try to figure out, is that an asphalt roof? Is that a cedar roof? Is that a slate roof? We've used different other visualiz visualization technology that I can't really get into right now to do the same thing. But the analytics are the big missing piece that we find around how do you actually find a market. So we've tried to combine the technology approach of using recycled plastics, plastics that no one else wants, with analytics, how do you determine a market, and how do you look at this market from different approaches. And we put that together, and then we said, we have to validate this product now. And when we go to market, we validate on three different topics. One is, we validate the product, is it hitting our product characteristics, is the slate roof holding up the way we want? And one success story we had early on is we sent it over to Australia to test it. Because one of the things about exterior building products is they have to be weatherable. So we found the worst climates across the globe, and we found those in Australia. We found in Australia one of the hottest places and one of the driest places on the earth. And we survived a cyclone. That was good news. We were glad. We were really sorry that the area had a cyclone, <laughs> but our product did great. So that was another reassurance that the product is going to perform. Well, then we have to make sure that we hit the customer. Do the customers like it? We need people to like this product. It's not enough that it's a great product, but we've got to have people to like it. And so we've had fantastic feedback from a very small launch that we're looking at. And then the market. Is the market going to accept this, or is the market really just want asphalt roofs? Can we actually find a market? So we actually have had some good luck with the small scale. And our plans are, with this material, is now we're going to look at a larger scale launch. We're going to actually look at going to a wider geography with this new product. But what I find even more exciting is the next phase. Because the next phase is one where we don't know what's going to happen. We've got multiple paths. So we've developed this new material science. So now we, we need to continue with this. We've put a lot of investment. We've got this one product called Roof that we can do, slate roofs. We're looking at others. We're looking at a cedar roof and a barrel tile roof along with that. I'm going to talk to my friend here, Joe, and try to figure out how we can put solar on that roof. Then we're going to look at other products as well and other industries. The automotive industry is going to be undergoing some major change coming up because of the new uh, miles per gallon requirement. So how can we factor into that industry? So we're going to look across industry as well that we've developed this material science because, by the way, we have a lot of plastic still going in landfills. 
and that problem is not going away anytime soon. So until that problem goes away, we're going to try to figure out how we can leverage it, how we can combine it with natural fibers, and how we can create new materials and new products for the future use. So with that, what I want to do is to leave you all with a quote. I enjoy this quote from Mark Twain. It's, don't be afraid to try new waters, to try new avenues. You make sure that you explore, you dream, you discover. To me, this encompasses a lot of what it takes to look at new technologies, look at new markets, and figure out where do you go next with